This iPad is all fingerprinted up. It looked like somebody was working it hard today. <laughs> Praise God. You know, um, say, I love Pastor. I had you say that for a reason because we have been studying on the subject of, uh, of uh, being led by the Spirit of God. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to go off of that tonight. We're going to go in a different direction. Praise God. Is that all right? I just really believe that uh, the Lord had given me something that uh, I believe that's very needful. Sometimes we let some things slip and we just need to be stirred back up again, all right? Praise God. So grab your Bibles, everybody. Lift your Bible up. Say this out loud. This is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living, the ever-producing seed of the living God. Father, I confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, my body is awake. From this moment forward, I will never be the same. I'll never, 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 I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I believe that in my personal life, uh, I have gotten some really strong things from the Lord, depending on where I was at the time and what I needed. But I think one of the greatest uh, revelations that I have ever had is concerning seed time and harvest. And the reason I say that is because everything that we do in our lives is a seed that's planted and we reap a harvest from it. And the whole kingdom of God operates this way, seed, time, and harvest. And if you realize that, it'll change your life. Praise God, I believe it'll change you uh, in every area uh, because you'll realize that it, you do reap what you sow. And so the word of the Lord tells us that. And uh, we're going to do some basic foundational scriptures here. But know this, that we're, we're specifically going to talk about planting financial seed tonight. A lot of people don't understand this. And as a matter of fact, I've been called into the office uh, at, by different pastors and to, they've been to, telling me, uh, you know, stop giving so much. You can't give every, if you give everything away, how can God ever bless you? Well, you know what? It keeps, the, it, keeps it flowing. So it comes in on every wave. So you can't outgive the Lord. Amen. And so I don't draw back from it. I am not against retirement benefits. I'm not against IRAs. As a matter of fact, I have one. I'm not against uh, uh, 401s. I'm not against any of those benefits. I'm not against people that, that work at a job to uh, their whole lives waiting to retire. But I want you to know, don't put your eggs in that basket without faith. Because anything in this world can crumble and fall. We've had men and women come into this uh, fellowship that uh, some of you may know 20-some years ago, Goodyear had a, a big um, factory over here on Council Road. We had several people that, that worked at that, and in one day they just said, we're shutting it down. Well, they got some severance pay, but they, that wasn't what they were counting on. They were counting on getting their 20, 30 years in and getting full benefits in retirement. Kenny and Wanda, Kenny lost his job working in Yukon. They shut the place down, give him a little severance pay. Now he delivers uh, parts at a, at a parts store. You know, you cannot put your eggs in a basket counting on, uh, well, I'm just, I can't wait till I retire. Dear Jesus, don't wait till you retire. Just enjoy every day. You know, if you wait to retire, I, I guarantee you when you're 65 years old and 70 years old, you're not going to feel like parachuting and scuba diving and doing all those deep sea diving things that you wanted to when you were a teenager. Amen. I still want to do them. I'm still going to do them, but I don't have the enthusiasm, you know, like, man, I got to do this. You know, when I, when I first got married, we used to live on a lake, uh, the first house that we had. And I used to work landscaping, and that's hard work. I'd work 16, 17 hours a day, and I would come home and jump in the lake and swim a couple miles just to relax. 
I don't think I'm going to do that now that I'm 10 years away from 79. <laughs> so you've got to put your trust in the Lord. The Lord is your security. He said, don't put your trust and confidence in uncertain riches because I've got to tell you, everything that you see around you is turning to dust. Everything. Those chairs right now are in the process of turning to dust. That's where they came from, and that's where they're going back to. When a tree is cut down and it falls to the ground, it's rotting and turning to dust. When this flesh gets laid down, it's going to turn to dust. And so it all rots, except when you put your confidence in God. And so you cannot outgive the Lord. The things that I sow into the kingdom of God promise me a return. And you can expect a harvest. I've had people come to me and say, well, I give and I'm not expecting anything in return. Well, it's because you haven't studied the word of God. He wants you to expect. He wants you to reap so that you can have more. Well, you know, that sounds humble, but that'd be like a farmer getting a thousand acre farm and going out and planting seed and saying, well, I'm not expecting a crop. Well, that's silly. Why'd you plant the seed? I want a crop. Amen. The more that I have, and the Lord just show, dropped this into my heart, that we've been on a sign here at New Beginnings Family Church to take this corner and build an awesome church sanctuary for not only us, but for the future, praise God, because I want you to know, just because Jesus comes back and takes us out of here, we go with him for seven years, we're coming back and we're going to be in this church teaching people that are born again during the millennium. And so we're going to be right back here doing the same thing that we're doing now, except we're going to do it better. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. So what you sow, you will reap. Turn to Mark chapter 4. Look at verse 20. I've got some different scripture references out of different translations. This is going to be from the King James, by the way. It says, talking about seed, all right? These are they which are sown in good ground. Are you good ground? Yes. We know that the ground is the heart. Amen? And your heart is where the seed produces. So it's sown on good ground such as hear the word, receive it, and it brings forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. Praise God. So it will produce. Amen? As long as we know how to get it to produce. Luke 6, 38 says this. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. It comes back to you. When I read this scripture, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I have a visual that when he says that I give, I, I think of a movie theater. And when I go to the movie theater, I have to eat popcorn. I just love to go to the movie theater and eat popcorn. And I get, they give you this tub of popcorn, you know, and it comes out and they fill it all up. And when they give it to you, if you beat it down, it goes down and you can get some more popcorn. Why? Because they fluff it, but you can pack it down. And that's the way I see the Lord doing it, that you expect a blessing, but before he gives it back to you, he shakes it down, and then it starts running over, bless God. So I want my popcorn tub full. In Genesis chapter 1, 29, I want to take you there because I want you to see how the whole kingdom of God operates. God said this, he said, Behold, I give you, talking about man, every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. It shall be for your produce, or for your productivity, or for your increase. This is what God has said. Now, if you read this scripture and you believe this scripture, you'll understand that God intended that you have seed so that you can plant so that you can have more. He always wants you to increase. And you know, he said this, as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. This right here is, a, is, a, is another uh, scripture to me that bears up the fact that 
You don't have to go up in the mountain somewhere and get some tribulating potatoes and store yourself up and be afraid of the tribulation. Why? Because if the earth is still here, you're going to have seed. God will provide seed time and harvest. Now, you can go up in the mountain and get yourself some tribulating food if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. I don't have to. Why? Because I'm not going to be here. Because he's going to rapture me out, praise God. I'm born again. Hallelujah. So I don't have to have any end time storage stuff. You know, when I was in Korea, they used to make kimchi. And they would put it, anybody ever been in Korea? Oh my goodness. You could tell when your houseboy came in to clean up that day when he had kimchi for supper. You could smell him at the other end of the barracks when he came in. But the way they do this kimchi is that they, they put it in quart jars and it's, it's fish heads and rice and cabbage and garlic and all kinds of things. And they put it in these jars and they go out in the rice fields and they bury it and let it ferment in the rice fields for I don't know how long. Probably been out there for decades. They probably forget where they put it. Like, like a squirrel burying nuts. They don't remember where it is. And then they go out there and they dig it up. Well, you know what? You don't have to go out there and bury yourself some kimchi and be afraid of the tribulation coming because God's going to provide for you. Amen. That was free. What the Lord is telling us here is that you always have seed. But I got this open vision the other day that if I have a handful of seed and, and I gave all of you some seed and, and told you that, this is your source, how many of you would just go home and eat the seed? If you eat that seed, you're done. But if you go home and you plant some of it, it's going to produce more for you. You'll have a harvest time. But if you go plant that seed, and then you look out in the field and you don't see anything the next day, and you go dig that seed up, it's never going to produce for you if you dig it up every day. You have to plant it and leave it in the ground. The ground knows what to do. The seed knows what to do. What does the ground do with that seed? It rots it. And when it rots, it produces the product. Amen. And we don't have to know how it does, but it works. Praise God. Don't be mocked. Turn to Galatians chapter 6 and look at verse 7. This is the New King James Version. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. What you sow reaps. And now you can reap negative or you can reap positive depending on what you sow. There are some people that are so negative it's a wonder they survive from day to day because they're reaping exactly what they're sowing and what they're believing for. Amen? Glory to God. In the Phillips translation, it says it like this. Don't be under any illusion. You cannot make a fool of God. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. So if you're not reaping enough for, that you desire, you need to look at what you have been sowing. Amen? You know, I, I, I always like this when, you know, I, I was in construction most of my life, and I, I trained Pastor Jason this way, that when you sit down to make a contract with somebody, if they don't trust you, then you better be cautious of that person because they're probably a person that you can't trust. Hello. Now, I know what the news tells all of you today, and you've got you to know your contractor. I get on the new, I listen to these news people, and I want to throw my shoe right through the TV because they don't understand the laws. They tell you on the TV, don't give any money to any contractor as a deposit because you don't know they could take your money and run with it, and that's true, they could. But they've never been a contractor because the law is this. If you buy a roof from me and I don't get a deposit, and I order those shingles, and I have them delivered, and they're on top of your roof, they're yours. I can't get them back. And that means I paid for your shingles. So when I do a job for somebody, I say at least, I want a third down, at least a third. That pays for the material anyway. Once the material's on their property, you can't get it back. It belongs to them. Amen. 
well, yeah, but you know, I'm giving you a, th- a third of, of the amount of the contract. I'm trusting you with a third of my money. I said, yeah, but I'm trusting you for two thirds. That means you've got two thirds of it that I got to get when I finish. And so we get into a contract and I've walked away and told people, I'm not doing the job. If you don't trust me, then why should I trust you? Amen. So we've got to trust the word of God that it produces and it does what it's supposed to do. Amen. Glory to God. So don't, don't be dishonest. If you come up with people, they, well, you just lie a lot. You better be careful. That person's probably a liar. Amen. If you steal, you better be careful. Your house is liable to get broken. Now, just because your house gets broken into doesn't mean that, don't understand that. But if, if you're a thief, get ready for somebody to steal from you. You will reap that someday. If you're dishonest, dishonesty is going to come to you. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 once again says, your harvest will depend entirely on what you sow. Amen. So when you plant, let's get into this real quickly. When you plant a financial seed, you have the right to expect a harvest. Now hang on, this is going to get good. I promise it's going to turn out all right. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 through 8 in the easy reading version says this. It says, remember this. The one who plants few seeds will have a small harvest, but the one who plants a lot will have a big harvest. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. You should not give it if it makes you unhappy or if you feel forced to give. God loves those who are happy to give, and God can give you more blessings than you need, and you will always have plenty of everything You will have enough to give to every good work. Wow, that's powerful. How many of you believe the word of God? If we really believe it, then we're going to not be afraid to act upon it. Though sometimes when you do this, when you you give, I mean, right away, the devil will come and your own thinking, you dummy, why did you do that? Why did you do that? You see, it's like a handful of seed. If you've got $100 and your rent's due Friday uh, in two days and it's $1,000, $100 isn't going to pay that. Hello. I've planted it many times. If it's not enough to meet the need, then it must be a seed. You see, I'm not preaching this just to preach it. I live this way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got to understand something. You are farmers, you are seed planters, but you are harvesters. You see, you've got to know when to reap. You've got to know when to sow. Amen. I don't just give to everything, not everybody. I pray and allow the Holy Spirit to tell me. (coughs) Excuse me. There (coughs) There are a lot of people standing on the corners of these interstates. I don't give to every one of them. There are some of them the Lord says, they don't have a need. Look at their shoes or look at their pants. Look at the way they're dressed. They don't have a need. They're con artists. Amen. But there are some of them you just know. The Holy Spirit just quickens you and says, that person is really living in the street. Amen. No, turn to Mark chapter 4, verse 26. This is a four-hour teaching, and I'm trying to get it in 15 more minutes. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 this, says this, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise up day and night, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knows not how. So when you sow the seed and you trust in this law of seed time and harvest, that's when your blessing comes. You see, it doesn't come every Friday. God doesn't pay every Friday. But as you sow the seed and you keep sowing, pretty soon it starts coming back. It starts coming back. Pastor Dorothy and I, uh, I forget which restaurant we were at. It's been about a month ago now. Uh, we ate our supper and we were sitting there fellowshipping. And we don't, we're not intimidated when we go to a restaurant. When our food comes or before our food comes, we reach across the table, generally hold hands. We pray over our meal. 
You don't know who's watching you, who's not. I don't care who's why. I'm not doing it for a show. I'm doing it to pray over the food that they're going to bring me. And if you ever go out to eat with pastor, especially if I order a steak and they bring it back and they say, would you cut that and see if it's okay? I always tell them it's just fine. I'll never send it back. I'll either eat it or I won't eat it, but I won't send it back. I don't want those cooks back there in the kitchen to get mad at me. Amen. Rub my steak under their arm or some stupid thing like that because I send it back and get it cooked more. No, pastor will eat it. Amen. (laughs) I saw at Burger King one time, these kids were, high school kids were serving at Burger King Years ago when I worked at the school system, and this one teacher, they, they just didn't like this one teacher at school, and I was standing in line, this teacher was ahead of me, and I, we were talking, he ordered his food, he turned around and was talking to me while he was talking to me, the kid opened his hamburger and spit in it, and get, I thought, okay, I see the way you kids are, okay, I'm done, with, okay, y'all are hungry now, I know. When you sow, (laughs) you've got to trust in seed time and harvest, amen? You can't see what's happening under the ground. Under the soil, you can't see it. But you've got to believe that that seed is doing what it's supposed to do. And that the soil is doing what it's supposed to do. Amen. Look at verse 28. The earth brings forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, and that full corn in the ear. But when the Fruit is brought forth immediately, puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. This is a law of progression. When you plant the seed, it begins to do the work. It begins to work on it. And you have to guard over that seed. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So then the harvest time comes. Amen? You want the maximum potential, don't you? How many of you just want a tenfold return or thirtyfold return? It says a hundredfold is possible, and I want to shoot for that. Now, I've read books where they said that the hundredfold return is not possible for today. I, I have read books by faith people said it's not possible. Well, I, I don't know what they said. Have you ever known anybody that's got a hundredfold return? It doesn't matter whether I know anybody that's got a hundredfold return. Jesus said it will produce 30, 60, or a hundredfold. I don't care who writes a book about it. I don't care who it is. I'll go with Jesus every time, won't you? Can I have an amen? Amen. You can get a book that says speaking in tongues isn't for today. You can get a book that says healing isn't for today. You can get a book that says you don't need to be born again today. Well, go with the Bible. I don't care what dumb people preach. Amen. Amen. But when the potential's there, when that full ear is there, you need to, man, it's harvest time, bless God. So how do we harvest? All right. 